Water is a basic necessity of life, and the almost universal assumption in America is what comes out of the tap is both safe and clean to drink. One attraction of living in the suburbs is the prospect of obtaining pure water resources from deep underground in a private well like this one. While municipal supplies are regularly tested for safety, there's no such assurance for the private homeowner, and it's up to the individual to get a water quality test so they know exactly what they're drinking. About a year ago, a leak in this hot water tank prompted me to get a water quality test in search of an explanation. The testing detected nitrate concentrations of 2.49 milligrams per liter in the drinking water. Although this is well below the EPA limit of 10.0 milligrams per liter for public supplies, it showed that some kind of biological contamination was reaching my well screen. Understanding how this is possible requires a closer look at a residential on-site septic system. Human waste begins a journey that starts in a toilet here and proceeds through the basement in a series of piping out through the foundation wall into a septic system tank that receives the effluent outside. Human waste contains large amount of carbon and nitrogen in the form of urea. In the settling tank that I've opened up here, the carbon consumes all of the oxygen and allows the urea to be transformed into ammonium ions. The liquid fraction of the waste flows out of the settling tank and into the drain field where in the soil it's further transformed. It's in the drain field located beneath my feet here that liquid effluent that flows out of the septic system is infiltrated downward into the soil. Most drain fields sit well above the water table, and as effluent slowly percolates down through the soil, the presence of oxygen and soil-dwelling microbes transform ammonium ions first into nitrite and finally into nitrate. It is these nitrate ions, NO3-, that infiltrate downward into groundwater. Nitrates are regulated in drinking water by the EPA because they cause health problems in humans, especially infants. Further, the World Health Organization recently identified that the consumption of processed meat is a factor contributing to cancer, particularly because they contain nitrates as preservatives. Although my well water only has about one-fourth the amount of nitrate in it that the EPA standard allows, it's still reasonable to ask. Would you want any of this in your drinking water at all? Groundwater is out of sight and thus out of mind for most people. This does not change the fact that pollutants added to groundwater today become a source of contamination for what we drink tomorrow and in fact for generations to come. Also, groundwater sources feed surface drainages that make their way to the ocean and eventually this leads to algal blooms and eutrophication there as well. The most effective solution is to avoid putting nitrogen into the waste stream to begin with. Of all the nitrogen that's associated with human food consumption, about 15% of it is food waste like this that generally goes down a garbage disposal or into a dishwasher and out into the septic system. An alternative approach is to compost this waste. Composting breaks down the nitrogen in food waste and makes it available for other plants to take in as nutrients. When we compost food waste like this, we can reduce the amount of nitrogen going into the residential septic system by as much as 15%. Another step that individuals can take is reducing the amount of meat in their diet. The amount of nitrogen contained in human urine is directly proportional to the amount of protein consumed as meat. American diets, on average, contain about 45% more meat than is recommended by FDA guidelines. Reducing that consumption would reduce the amount of nitrogen going into the septic system. 
But humans are always going to have some nitrogen in their waste, and we need to handle it in a manner where it does not contaminate our water supplies. One possible solution lies in urine diversion technology. Urine diverting toilets like this one separate out the liquid portion of human waste so that it can be handled separately. Urine leaving the toilet is routed through separate piping into a holding tank. From here, it can be collected and turned into a liquid fertilizer product to replace much more energy intensive and costly solid fertilizers currently in use in agricultural industries. Another option would be to use the urine as liquid fertilizer on site at the residential property. An in-ground irrigation system like this could be part of the solution. Stored urine would be metered into the irrigation stream which would allow it to be spread over the lawn as a replacement for solid fertilizers. We all have a vested interest in developing sustainable practices that isolate the nitrogen in human waste from all water sources.